Hey everybody, this is SpongeBob SquarePants, and here's board problem 47. This is uh, uh, the review for Chapter 9 test, which will be uh, uh, in two days from now, but uh, we're going to start uh, Chapter 10 tomorrow, uh, just because there's going to be a substitute on, on Wednesday. Okay, uh, so consider the following scatter plots. So we got those three scatter plots right there, which is true about the correlation. None are zero. Well, clearly this guy is zero and this guy is zero because I can't really get a, a correlation line, a regression line that fits that data. I mean, it would go like, like this on this one and same on this one, you guys. There's, there's no correlation right here. So it says here uh, one is zero, one is negative, one is positive. That's not true either. Uh, C, one is zero, and both others are negative. That's not true either, because there's two of them that are zero. So it's either choice D or E. Two are zero, and the other is close to negative one, uh, or the other one is negative one. Well, I, I can't say that is negative one, because it's not a perfectly straight line, so it's going to be choice E. Okay, there's your answer staring right at you. All right. Uh, so here's chapter nine review. It's a quick review. 9.1 is on sampling distribution. So inference is drawing conclusions about a population. So we take uh, simple random samples to do that based on the result of a well-chosen sample. Okay, uh, i.e., uh, we use uh, the same. Uh, we use sample statistics to estimate population parameters. Note that the different samples yield d different values of statistics. That's what's called sampling variability. Uh, bias and variability are two important concepts related to the given statistics. In order for a statistic to be uh, an unbiased estimator of a population parameter, the mean of the sampling distribution must equal the true, uh, which is usually unknown parameter. Okay, uh, so we got to set it equal to it. Uh, we won't know it, so we, that's why it's equal. So the variability of a statistic is controlled by the sampling uh, by the sample size. Obviously, larger samples get better estimates. Okay, so 9.2 is sampling proportions, uh, and so sample proportions, which is p hat. Uh, uh, p hat is an unbiased estimator of the population proportion p, uh, since uh, um, the average, the mu of p hat, uh, is equal to p, just like in, in the first part right there that we just covered. Okay, sampling variability. Okay, now this is when it's sampling proportions. I had some students ask, uh, when do we use this formula or the other one? When it talks about proportions or when it talks about uh, means? When it's talking about proportions, your, um, uh, your standard deviation is calculated by the square root of whatever p is, 1 minus p, divided by your sample size. Okay, provided that um, um, your, your sample size, uh, 10 times your sample size, or in other words, your population is at least 10 times your sample size. This says another thing, right? This says it in a kind of a backwards way. 10 times your sample size is less than your population. That's what that says. Okay, in other words, what we said in class, your, samples, your, your, your population has to be at least 10 times your sample size. All right, uh, and the shape uh, of the sampling distribution is approximately normal, and these conditions have to be met before we can go ahead and calculate this. If we if these aren't met, we can't calculate this. You're done, and you state that NP is not greater than or equal to 10. So they have to be greater than or equal to 10, and, and N times the complement of that 1 minus P has to also be greater than or equal to 10. If either one isn't, then you're done, but you've got to state why you're done. Okay, 9.3 is sampling mean. Uh, Oh, come on now, here we go. Okay, so use the law of large using the law of large numbers. Averages are less variable than individual observations. We observed that in several of our uh, examples in class. So check your notes out. We did that. Averages are are more normal than individual observations. That makes sense. Uh, remember the central limit theorem, which is coming up. The sample mean. Uh, now this is where we use this one. The sample mean, this is the mean we use this formula for standard deviation, you guys. As normal distribution with your population mu is the same, uh, and your standard deviation is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Thus creating the central limit theorem that says that uh, it's true for any population as long as the sampling distribution n is large enough. Okay. Uh, and then for more information, there's just some more notes right there, so you probably want to pause that and, and copy that down. So there's some more information right there I found for you guys, and it's pretty cool.